Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Kressler. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And I'm very excited today because I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. For the last year or so, I've been getting into modular synthesis as a way to supplement a lot of the music production stuff I've been doing inside of Live. And it's been a really fun and engaging project to work with, uh, but there have been a few hiccups and bumps along the way and a lot of, a big learning curve to not only learn what all the gear is and how it works, but also how to integrate it with Live. So I want to make this video as probably hopefully the first of a series of videos, if you guys are into it, talking about not only mantra synthesis, your rack, sound design, all, all the fun, cool stuff that my mantra can do, but also how to integrate live with the modular together, which I think is really exciting to get the kind of best of both worlds between digital and analog. So without any further ado, uh, this is the rack that I've been working with, uh, like I said, for the last year or so. It's gone through a lot of changes and has kind of evolved over time. In later videos, I'll probably go more in depth into exactly what everything does and how it all works. For, for this video, I'm going to keep it real simple. Um, this is kind of meant for people who are, you know, live users or people who have been making music on the computer for a long time and are thinking about diving more into the mantra world themselves and want some ideas on, on how they can get started with that. So the big thing about a modular synth is that there's no MIDI here. Uh, all of these inputs and outputs are going to be sending and receiving CV or audio. So CV stands for control voltage, and it's basically the equivalent of MIDI for this, these kinds of devices. So if you are working inside a live and you have lots of MIDI gear, it can't really communicate unless you figure out a way to translate a signal from a MIDI signal into a CV signal. And to do that, there are lots of different solutions. Uh, one of the main ones is you could get a module that is just a MIDI to CV converter. So you just plug a USB in there, send it to MIDI, and then it's going to spell out CV, and then you can use that to control whatever you want. I took a slightly different route, which is using this module right here. This is the Expert Sleepers ES9. Uh, this is basically just an audio interface with uh, lots of inputs and lots of outputs. But the big difference between this and another audio interface is that all these inputs and outputs are DC coupled, which means that you can send an electrical signal through them, meaning you can send CV through them. So I could send audio in and out through these, or I could send CV in and out through these. Uh, and that's why I got this. So this is the inputs, this and the outputs. This is kind of like the, the in-between between my computer and all the rest of my hardware here. And this just connects through a USB right here into my computer, just like a regular audio interface. Uh, there are a couple other audio interfaces that are out there that can uh, send and receive CV, um, but most of them can't. So let's check this out. Uh, so if I want to start sending a signal here, I need to use a special device called, uh, which is available in the CV tools pack, um, which is, this is a free live pack that came out a few years ago. Um, it's amazing if you're into modular and hardware, uh, this is really, really handy. So we're going to go here and we're going to grab the CV instruments. And this is a max for live device. Uh, this is just a MIDI instrument that allows us to basically take MIDI and then convert it into a CV signal. So in here in the CV instrument, we have CV gate and we have CV pitch. We have an output for gate and output for pitch. One of the things you need to know about CV is that when you're working with MIDI, MIDI contains all kinds of different information. It contains things like pitch, uh, velocity, note on, note off, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to take the note on and off and we're going to be sending that as a gate and we're going to take the pitch and send that out as pitch. So uh, we're going to send this out. We're going to choose external output. So I have the, ex the output of live set up to be going to the ES9. And we're going to send this out to channel 9. Uh, weirdly enough, these are your outputs here. It labels them 1 through 8, but these are actually outputs uh, 9 through 16. So output 9 is going to be that one right there, which should be this one here. So now that I've done that, let me plug in some MIDI notes. So if I send out these two MIDI notes, we can see this is now lighting up each time that there's a MIDI note. So we can take that MIDI note, which is now a CV note or CV gate, uh, and I can put this into the trigger of my noise engineering Manus Eteritas oscillator. So this is uh, one of my favorite voices, um, really cool, interesting, weird sounds come out of this. So we're going to be triggering this. Then what we need to do if I want to hear it is in the audio from within our CV instrument, we can receive from our external input, which again is our ES9. And I'm going to select input number one. And then I can go out of here and then in here. And here. 
now we can get a signal and I can start tweaking these settings. And that's just triggering that. So one thing that you may note here is that even though we're playing different MIDI notes, it's all just playing the exact same note, just all the same here, which is not what we want. We want this to change. So to do that, we're gonna go over to our CV pitch and we're gonna send this out also to our next one output, which is our ES9, and send this to output 10. So this is gonna come out right here. And we can see this is lighting up. And then I can send this out to the pitch of my Manus Ateritas. So now we're getting note on-off messages as well as pitch information. And we can see it's actually changing pitch there, which is pretty cool. However, there's an issue here. Uh, and you can see as I load up this tuner, it's just the tuner audio effect. I'm playing a C and then a different C. Neither one of them are in tune, but I'm supposed to be playing a C and a G note, which means uh, the MIDI is not matching up with the pitch of my oscillator. So what I need to do is I need to calibrate it. So uh, I'm going to hit this button right here to calibrate it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust this setting on the Manus Ateritas. So it's just always playing. And I'm gonna keep it quiet so I can talk over it. Uh, so it's gonna ask me to pick a waveform. Picked a waveform, great. Make sure it's going out, got it. Make sure I'm setting a pitch, got it. Uh, and then here's where it gets a little weird. Let me turn this all the way down. Uh, sometimes this bugs out. It's supposed to have a tuner right here, and sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, on top of that, it says to tune it at C3, and then it's going to pitch it up and then pitch it down. For some reason with the Manus, uh, it only pitches it up. So I'm not going to pitch it at C3. I'm going to pitch it down here, which is a much lower C, but it should still work, hopefully. Let's start the calibration. This part doesn't work. And then now if I start playing different notes, it's actually playing the notes I want them to play, which is great. So now I can play things with the push. Everything sounds good. Everything uh, is responding and playing right. Um, or if I play with my MIDI notes, it's actually gonna be playing the correct notes. So that what this means is that I can start writing MIDI with my, either my push or just writing MIDI in a MIDI clip, and then I could send it out here. This plays it, and then I just send the audio back just like that. So we have a gate out to trigger notes going on and off. We have a pitch out to control the pitch, and then we have audio coming back in. So just those three cables to get me my signal just like that. However, there is a lot more that we can do here. So for example, um, let me play with these notes a little bit put some longer notes and we'll make them a little bit lower. So say I want to do some kind of modulation here. I can hit this little triangle right here and then it opens up. I have two envelopes, a shaper, which is just an LFO, some expression control and mapping control. So I have a lot more that I can do here, but say I want to put an LFO on my Manus test. I could use one of the built-in LFOs I have down here in my URL rack, but just for the sake of example, and I say I don't have those and I want some kind of modulation. I can take this LFO here. We have you know, LFO rate. We have uh, amount here. We have different shapes built into it. I can customize the shape, but I'm gonna send this out to a different CV output. So we're gonna go out here, external output. We're already using nine and 10, so we'll use 11. So now coming out of this output here, I could send this into say, for example, the filter of my Manus Teritas. So now if I hit play, I have LFO control and I can use that to control any one of these inputs here. So I'm using it on the filter, uh, but I could put it on a different control just to try some like interesting sounds, see what it sounds like.
So you can start modulating things directly from live if you want to, uh, or you could use any of your, your built-in, uh, not built-in, you could use any of the other modules you already have in your rack to modulate things. Uh, so one of the things I want to point out with this video is that if you are building a modular rack and you only have a couple modules and you're looking to kind of fill in the gaps in your rack with different uh, ways to modulate things or control things, you can do that with live. So live can act like an extra rack for you for controlling things that are actually inside of your hardware rack, which is really, really handy. Those are the first two things I want to cover in this video series talking about modular. Hopefully that's useful for you. If you are interested in getting into modular synthesis, uh, having something like the ES9 is a great way to pair up with live. And that way you can get kind of the best of both worlds, in my opinion. On top of that, if you are interested in getting into modular, but you are not ready to invest the cash into actually building a rack, I would highly recommend checking out the software VCV Rack. Uh, it's free and you can basically test out and try out all these things. It's a, it's a virtual software um, where you can kind of build your own racks. And a lot of the virtual racks that, or virtual modules you can use are based off of real modules that you can actually buy. So I definitely recommend checking that if you are thinking about dipping your toe into the modular world, but are not really sure if, the, if it's right for you. It's free and it's very pressure free and you can try it out and see if you like it. So that's it. Uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed watching that. If you did, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I release videos every Monday and Thursday. And if this video works out well and you guys enjoy it, I will be releasing more modular synthesis slash Ableton Live videos in the future as well. So again, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.